Hi, everyone. Welcome to a special Children's Week chat. I'm Michelle Delafour, Senior Vice President for Budget and Tax Policy at First Focus on Children. And I am filling in today for my boss, who unfortunately is responding to a family emergency. Uh, today, we close out the third annual Children's Week, a week where advocates across the country have been amplifying the issues most important to our nation's children and call on, on our country's lawmakers to act in the best interest of the child. And what better way to end than with a tremendous defender of children representing Washington's first congressional district, I am very pleased to welcome Congresswoman Susan Del Bene. Thank you very much for being here and I'll turn over the stage to you to give some opening remarks. Welcome and thank you. Thank you. Um, thanks, Michelle. And um, good afternoon, or in my case, good morning um, to everyone since I'm out on the West Coast right now. Um, first, I just want to say thank you to First Focus for all you've done on the child tax credit and to combat child poverty, as well as the Century Foundation for all the work you do to help lift kids out of poverty. Um, I'm excited to be here to discuss the American Family Act and how we can decrease child poverty in this country. Um, I am very passionate about this issue. I know you spoke to my colleague, um, Rosa DeLauro in the past, who's also extremely passionate, um, but every child in our country should have the opportunity to succeed. Um, unfortunately, this pandemic has left many families without jobs, uh, forcing them to choose between paying rent or feeding their families, and this is unacceptable. Um, Thanks to the hard work of organizations I've mentioned, as well as the Harris family, my colleagues and I are in, in Congress are taking action. Um, last year, along with Congresswoman DeLauro, um, I introduced the American Family Act, which would significantly expand the child tax credit. Um, the House passed HEROES Act, which is legislation um, we passed in response to the pandemic, um, included a one-year expansion of the child tax credit, making it fully refundable, increasing the amount to $3,000 per child and $3,600 for children under six, makes 17-year-olds qualifying children, and makes the credit advanced or a monthly payment. Um, a recent study from the Center on Poverty and Social Policy at Columbia University shows that pre-pandemic, a child tax credit expansion like that that is included in the HEROES Act could cut the child poverty rate by two-fifths and the child poverty rate for Black children in half. Now, with the COVID-19 recession, current ch child poverty rates are projected to be even higher than these estimates, and the HEROES Act could reduce child poverty um, from this higher baseline. So in Washington, I hear how expanding the child tax credit would benefit children and families. And yesterday, um, I serve on the Ways and Means Committee, and yesterday um, we had a hearing on providing relief for families and workers through the tax code. One of the witnesses, Martha Rodriguez, um, a fellow Washingtonian um, here, is a bilingual early education teacher with two children. And because of the pandemic, she and her husband went from having four jobs to only one. They aren't eligible for full unemployment, <clears throat> excuse me, because they're still able to work part-time. Mm. And I asked her during the hearing how the expansion of the child tax credit could help her family during this uncertain time. And she said it would be very helpful because they don't want to keep asking the public for help. They want to work, but they need to pay for food which she noted is increasingly becoming more expensive and they have to pay their bills. They don't wanna to have to choose between paying those bills and saving for food. Um, that's not a choice anyone should have to make. So the child tax credit would help their family during this difficult time, allowing Martha to provide for her children with a stable environment and food on the table. Um, while during this pandemic, um, being unable to work or at least work um, at the same extent she was before. So strengthening the child tax credit creates a fairer system that allows parents to provide opportunities for their children to succeed. Um, we know that strengthening and expanding the child tax credit and providing it as a monthly payment to families is one of the most effective ways to combat child poverty. And so I'm proud that the House was able to include this in the HEROES Act. And now we need the Senate to move, this is critical. So thank you, look forward to talking about this more. Thanks for all the work that you're doing. 
Great. Thank you very much for those remarks. And um, I, I was able to tune in to part of the hearing yesterday um, and your Washingtonian uh, person testifying really sort of tugged at my heartstrings there. Um, yes, so one thing that we also have been working on are the economic impact payments and sort of looking at how that program now um, an additional payment, which is also in the HEROES Act, combined with uh, a strengthened and expanded child tax credit could really uh, be helpful to families who most need it. Um, do you, uh, would you talk a little bit about that and, and, and how you see them as complementing each other and helping families and the possibility of the Senate, moving the Senate on that and how we as advocates can be helpful in that effort? Um, sure. Um, first of all, uh, I think the biggest thing, you know, we've talked to economists across the country about what we needed to do, especially during this time of crisis. And um, we've heard across the board, and I'd say in a bipartisan way, that we needed to get resources into the hands of families um, right away. And so direct payments are one way to get that. Um, but also another way is through the child tax credit. Um, and that's why we talk so much about um, making sure that we would have a monthly payment or something in the in kind of the tax lingo an advanced refundable tax credit so that money gets to families right away to help them with their day-to-day -day expenses. Um, and um, the the HEROES Act really contains a meaningful one-year expansion of the child tax credit um, and it makes it fully refundable and increases the amount, as I said earlier, to three thousand dollars per child and and thirty six hundred for um, children under six. Again, we know the challenges, the particular challenges and expenses yeah. that go along with having young children. So both of those together, um, I think, are so important because we get dollars into hands of families right away, helping with the expenses they have right away. Um, and we know that if we can help families through this time, and I'd say the child tax credit is also critically important that it continues on beyond this time of crisis, because we know all of those resources are, are incredibly helpful to families who um, need that assistance, uh, needed that assistance before the pandemic. Yes, thank you for that. And, and as you mentioned in your opening remarks, um, the provision in HEROES would allow the child tax credit to be available on a monthly basis and it you know that just seems so important because uh, as is the full refundability because people pay month uh, their bills on a monthly basis right you don't just pay your bills at, at tax season so um i think that's really important and we will continue to push on that and we absolutely appreciate your leadership on that important legislation um, can i um, add one thing there um i think Sometimes when we talk about tax credits, we it's confusing to people. They feel like it's something that will take place at the end of the year when you're doing their taxes. It doesn't seem like something that would be helpful immediately. So um, it's important to for people to understand what it means to have that that tax credit um, actually means a monthly payment. That it actually is something that would be available right away. Um, that's not always clear to folks when we talk about this from a policy perspective. So I encourage folks to make sure that we do our best to educate people on that point. Great. Thank you for that. Um, well, while we have you, I know as a defender of, of children, um, your work on the American Family Act, but certainly you have a number of other issues important to children that you're working on. Um, is there anything particular you'd like to to address um, and encourage your colleagues in the House and the Senate to um, devote their efforts toward um, issues that are being meaningful to children? Um, well, uh, there are many things, so I won't take up your <laughs> entire day um, with them, but uh, um, one important thing we actually talked about in the hearing that we had yesterday is uh, childcare. And, um, and I think that has also been heightened and I talked about um, Martha, um, who was speaking so eloquently about the impact on her family, um, even when folks talked about going back to work, um, her point was, I can't go back to work if I don't have a safe place for my child to be also. So we have this challenge um, to make sure that we have 
uh, child care availability. Um, I helped introduce the Child Care and Dependent Credit Enhancement Act. Mm -hmm. um, Congressman Danny Davis, who's a subcommittee chairman on Ways and Means, um, introduced this bill and it modernizes the child and dependent care tax credit. So we have the child tax credit, the CTC. <laughs> we also have the child and dependent care tax credit, the CDCTC, just to get you uh, acronyms <laughs> to struggle with. But it would help more working families benefit by addressing the rising costs of child care. Um, and uh, I know the National Academies of Science um, released a roadmap to reducing child poverty, um, which concluded that the child and dependent care tax credit and making it fully refundable, like we were just talking about in terms of uh, refundability, um, was necessary in order to significantly reduce child poverty. So I'd say child tax credit, but also child and dependent care tax credit, um, also very critical for, for families and to help our children to succeed. Great, thank you for that. And the CDCTC is also in the, the HEROES Act. Yes. Yeah, very good. Well, you have been a, a, an advocate for children for a long time. Um, so on a little more personal note, I'm, I'm curious what, what, what inspires you to, to do this work for children? Well, um, first of all, I'm a mom. I have two kids <laughs> um, and I think uh, all of us know the challenges uh, of raising children, even in the best of circumstances. And so making sure every child has the opportunity as an opportunity to succeed is very personally important to me, not only as a mom, but because my family went through a lot of financial struggles when I was growing up. Um, we moved a lot. My dad had lost his job. Um, and um, I was fortunate. There were a lot of folks who helped me get to where I am today. And I, you know, one of the big reasons I ran for Congress in the first place is because I thought if I was growing up today, I may not have had those same opportunities available to me. Um, a great education being part of that too. Mm -hmm. So um, I want to make sure that every child from every zip code in our country has that chance to succeed. Um, and I've talked to many parents, of course, every parent wants that opportunity for their child. Um, and I'll, Mar Martha Rodriguez, every story, um, I think inspires mm -hmm. all of us to take action to do more. So um, it, I'm extremely passionate about this. I know all of you are too, but there are things that we can do that we know will make a difference. And that's why it's so important that we um, work hard to get legislation like CTC and CD CTC passed. Great, thank you for that. And we will keep working with you and your wonderful staff. Um, we we appre appreciate all of you very much and your um, support for children's issues. Um, it has been a pleasure speaking with you today. And thank you for everything you do. Um, and have an enjoyable afternoon. And that is, I think, us wrapping up Children's Week uh, for 2020. So thank you again, Congresswoman, and your staff. Thanks, Michelle. I appreciate it. And please, everyone, stay safe and stay healthy and uh, over this challenging time and have a have a great weekend. Thank you. Take care. Take care.